Hey gang, in this video, I'm gonna help you pass A+. Hey gang, it's Ryan from ITMasterKey.com and my job is to help each and every one of you guys get certified. So the A plus exam is usually the first exam that a lot of people go after when they're looking to get certified. So the whole purpose of this video is to help you on that journey because the A plus exam is a two part exam and these exams are not easy. These questions may be similar to some of the questions that you may run across in the actual exam. Are these the actual questions on the exam? Afraid not. But good news is this is going to help you to get in the right frame of mind. All right, you ready? Let's go ahead and get to it. John is a system administrator for Master IT. He's currently working in the command line. He enters a command that will allow him to copy multiple files simultaneously through multi-threading. What command did John enter? X copy, standard copy, robocopy, copy, revert. So RoboCopy is short for Robust File Copy, and it makes things a little bit smoother, a little bit faster because unlike Standard Copy and X Copy, it uses something called multi-threading. Microsoft Windows File Replication Command is known as Robust File Copy, or simply called RoboCopy. It uses the concept of time step and data step for incomplete file transfers. This helps it tolerate network interruptions. It knows where to start from using that recovery record, having the date and timestamp. RoboCopy eliminates the chance of failure as it skips NTFS junction points as NTFS happens to cause infinite loops. RoboCopy replaces all other commands with multiple exceptional features. The concept of using RoboCopy to copy multiple files simultaneously is multi-threading. The usage of multi-threading makes it much faster than standard copy and also X copy. Ronnie is a junior network analyst. He is currently dividing a network into smaller networks. He believes this will make routing of data more efficient. What's the technical term for this? Subnetting, traversing networks, IP range scoping, reroute looping. So subnetting is something that makes people pee on themselves. So whenever somebody has to subnet, they get very, very, very scared. So subnetting involves math, a little bit of math, right? The purpose of subnetting is to route data more efficiently and also not to waste IP addresses. So IP addresses are literally just the addresses of devices on the actual network, right? So every device needs an IP address so data knows where to go. So subnetting just creates subnetworks of the primary network to make sure that the data runs around real smooth. A subnet is a smaller network within a network that requires a subnet mass. Subnetting is the process of dividing a network into two or more subnets. Its primary function is to make the routing of data within a network more efficient and secure. Subnetting also helps make better use of IP version 4 addresses. Rob is explaining wireless security to a student. He states that WPA was replaced by WPA2. Rob says WPA uses TKIP, which had known vulnerabilities. Which of the following may have been one of the things TKIP is vulnerable too. So WPA uses TKIP, which is Temporal Key Integrity Protocol, and it's supposed to be an update to WEP. Unfortunately, it uses a lot of the same 
mechanisms that WEP uses or WEP, which opens us up to a bunch of different vulnerabilities. Two of those vulnerabilities being brute force attack and dictionary attack. So a brute force attack is literally where a hacker, software, something uses as many different combinations, as many different guesses as it can to try to guess a password and get into a device or get into a account. A dictionary attack literally runs from the first letter in a dictionary all the way down to the last letter in a dictionary to figure out if any of those are your password. TKIP uses the same underlying mechanism as WEP or WEP, which opens it up to a lot of the same vulnerabilities. TKIP is an encryption protocol included as part of the IEEE 802.11i standard for wireless LANs. It was designed to provide more secure encryption than notoriously weak wired equivalent privacy, the original WLAN security protocol. Before we get into the next question, if you haven't liked this video, subscribe to the channel and share it with anybody who can benefit. Shame on you. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to do that right now. All right, time's up. Let's get right back into the quiz. Blank attacks based on eavesdropping on communication. Used to obtain information secretly by the attacker placing listening devices in between the source and the destination. A lot of you guys are like, ooh, I know, it's man in the middle. So believe it or not, the name for man in the middle attacks has been updated to on path attacks. So technically you're right, but it just has a new name. So on path attacks and middleman attacks are the same thing, but the updated or newer version of a middleman attack is now called an on path attack. And simply put, you just put a listening device or some kind of listening software in between the source and the destination, and you either just record the information, you can even manipulate the information, but it's just gonna be something in between the source and the destination that is actually gonna be listening to the data that's being sent. Um, an on-path attack, formerly known as a man in the middle, places themselves in between two devices, often a user's device and a server and it intercepts or modifies communications between the two. The blank protocol was the first to allow the usage of two radio frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. It also supports bandwidth speeds up to 600 megabits per second. So 802.11M was created in 2009. The purpose of it was to increase speed, reliability, and the effective range of wireless networks. Wireless N was developed in 2009 to improve speed, reliability, and extend the range of wireless transmissions. It was the first standard to use MIMO, also known as multiple input, multiple output technology. MIMO products use a series of antennas to receive more data from one device at a time, which results in faster data transmissions. Hey gang, if this video wasn't quite enough, head over to itmasterkey.com, pick up some free training, and while you're over there, apply for the Zero to Hero program where you can get your first certification in two weeks. If this was helpful to you, leave a comment down below, tell me what certification you're going after and what your plan is to get that certification and what date you will be certified. Other than that, I'll see you in class.